I'm talking about a contagious spirit, something that can haunt you in your sleep. It can, it can haunt you in the bus. It can, it can provoke something on the inside. And he prophesied from morning until evening. We, 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 we want to ask God bring those days back again bring those days back again wherein men will drink the wine that is wine indeed we want to acknowledge you as a fellowship as a people thank you for your mighty hand of deliverance we submit to your covering we submit to your protection we submit, Lord, under your mighty hand of power. Be thou exalted in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. We'll just do something very brief because I came to pray. There are a few prayer points we need to execute tonight to seal up our victories in the name of Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 6. Tonight we are talking about spiritual attacks. Spiritual attacks. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 to 12. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 to 12. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Verse 12 is my emphasis. He said, for we wrestle. And the key word in this presentation is wrestle. For we wrestle. The reason for which he's saying, we should put on the whole armor of God is that we will be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And then for your information, we wrestle. The word wrestle here, I need to pick it from the Greek lexicon. <coughs> the pronunciation of that word is pale. It means wrestling. Such wrestling contest between two individuals that each endeavors to throw a blow against the opponent. So this wrestling that we are talking about accommodates punches. How many of you have ever watched a wrestling bout? You are not likely to come to the ring even if your opposition is insignificant without ripping a punch. So that's spiritual attack. The punches that demon spirits strike at us. The punches. Have you ever seen a wrestler or a boxer that comes into the ring and he gives you a knockout without receiving one punch? Please help me tell your neighbor, punches are allowed. Punches. This kind of warfare, punches are allowed. I, I know you don't like attack. I came to teach you and to educate you about attacks, spiritual attacks. First of all, understand that it is allowed. There are several engagements you might find yourself in and you have feedback from there. It doesn't mean you are not strong. It just means that we wrestle. We wrestle. Once upon a time, I went to preach. We started from Enugu. It was an... It was a, an Eastern Regional Apostolic Invasion. We started from Enugu. It was powerful. If I'm not mistaken, that the hall we used is the biggest possible hall that is available for rent in the whole of Enugu State. It was filled up. People were outside. My former colleagues in the office that were trying to, when they came to the venue and they saw the crowd, they didn't have the confidence to make it. I say, come inside, I'm inside. They left because of the crowd that was outside. So we did the Enugu conference. It was in Enugu that I prayed for a lady that was deaf, and she 
began to hear, and I asked her, how did you become deaf? And she said she went for a crusade, and when a pastor laid hands on her, that's how she became. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Yes, that was, that was the story of how she became deaf. We finished from Enugu, we went to Oka. It was in Oka, I was in the hotel room praying, and I saw blood. I don't know with what eyes, whether it was in this body or not, but I saw blood running on the walls of the hotel that they put me. And when I pressed about it and pressed about it, the great one said it was not the hotel. It was not because it was not particular to the hotel, but the entire territory, that there's blood shed in this territory. Gave some instructions as to what we need to do. It was a mighty meeting. In Enugu, cripples walked in Oka cripples walked. We moved from Oka to Oweri. It was in Oweri. After the first night, it was very tight. Second night, I went and prayed, and then it was the third night. When we came to the field, so I know some of you were watching, it rained throughout. I couldn't preach. It was when I went back that there was a spiritual fight. The principality came to my room. I defeated it, but it touched me here. <laughs> Please help me tell your neighbor, we wrestle. He touched me here. I left over here. I went to Abba. We had our meeting in Abba, path. From Abba, went to Portacot, the edge of, yeah, Portacot, and finished the whole instant, instant conference. By the time I got back, I thought I was dead. And Shala now came and said, he has crusade somewhere that Kai! he told them that I'm coming. I put on one garment and followed him. We crossed the river. What's the river in Gbe's village, Pastor Gbe. Crossed the river to go for the crusade. I was on the pulpit preaching and they didn't know I was blind. I almost fell, but they didn't know. At least the thing didn't stop me from talking. For like 20 minutes, I couldn't see. I was still talking, preaching, preaching. It was a powerful night that night. I crawled to my bed and I was sure that I would not wake up the next day. And I told Jesus, uh -uh. is this how my exit from this world will look like? <laughs> and in the dream, the Lord now came to me and said, don't worry about yourself, just follow me. Came back, went to the hospital. When they tested me, I was not, I was so sick. According to the test, the principality touched me. And so that's the blue. I was advised to rest. I rested. There were treatment, all of that. And I got back to my feet and told Satan, You would have taken me. <laughs> it, it's in, it was in your interest for you to take me because you too, you won't rest again. A senior minister called me. You know, I called him. I said, ah, does the devil attack you the way he attacks me? He said, my son. In 1983, <laughs> I went for a crusade in Oupa. And the whole place scattered. In fact, I'm talking about Evangelist Sunday, which he even gave an altar call and said, if you're a witch here, if you're a witch, signify witches. Which the power was too much that witches had to accept we're here. We're also, we also came. We came for the crusade. Okay. And Satan spoke to him. Satan said, if you allow my people, I will allow you. If you keep attacking my people, I will continue to attack you. But if you allow my people, I will allow it. So Satan brought that thought to him before he came for the crusade ground. And when the hand of God was moving so powerfully and the witches indicated that there were witches, Satan spoke again and said, didn't we agree that <laughs> if you allow me, I will allow you. So because of that quiet agreement, he refused to deliver those 
which is. He said, you are delivered in Jesus' name. And you know that's not how deliverance takes place. <laughs> Do you know that she was driving out of that crusade ground on the way, just like one hour on the way back home, the witches, they attacked him. So he said, ah. So Satan doesn't keep to his agreements. So he made up his mind that he was going to, that's 1980, what? Three. How many years down the road? He made up his mind that he was going to do damage to the kingdom of darkness. Because Satan will never keep any negotiation agreement with you for, for your safety. Please help me tell your neighbor, we wrestle. If the issue of that attack was not strong, I will not tell you. You think? It was as if life was living. But I continue preaching. Continue preaching. And what, what, after that crusade, Jesus Christ. I learned a thing or two. First thing I learned was not to overstretch my body. Right? You need to be in very good balance in health in spirit to be able to combat spiritual warfare don't stand at any extreme satan will exploit it are you with me so even now that you are fasting ensure that you are hydrated take water eh? don't say you are don't find yourself on any extreme whatsoever if you want to survive this war so we're talking about spiritual attacks, and I will just be very, very brief. John chapter 10. John chapter 10. John chapter 10, verse number 10. It says, The thief cometh not but to steal, to kill and to destroy. So these are three levels of attacks. Some attacks are attacks of theft. Where Satan tries to take from you that which is legitimately yours. Hallelujah. Destiny theft is a specialty in spiritual attacks. We have thefts, we have exchanges. What is meant for you can be spiritually exchanged and given to someone else through sorcery, through manipulation. So we have first kind of attacks are in form of thefts. For the thief cometh not, even though he is identified as a thief. His activity goes beyond stealing. It's inclusive of stealing and it goes beyond stealing. Theft. Hallelujah. There are, we've seen people, I'm talking about in practical ministry, practical experience, we've seen people that, um, I don't know how the devil was able to see that they had a bright future. And he put spanner in the works of their destiny, transmitted the, the essence of their destiny. And that destiny was funding someone else's life. And the advancement that was supposed to come to this young man was going to the other person. I don't know how they achieved that, but it was the work of the thief. So there are some deliberate prayers I would like to lead us in praying against the work of a thief. This spiritual thief, oh my, I've seen people that were supposed to be wealthy in abject poverty. And people use their, the substance of their word spiritually to fund other interests. Those of you that are from the thief extraction of this state, there is a certain witchcraft spell 
which has gained reputation over the years. Uh, what's the name of that? Chief, Chief Don, please take the microphone and mention that name. Because somebody in, in Finland will not know that there's anything like that. Can you describe that witchcraft? Please. Yeah. Switch on your microphone. So Chief Don will try to help us describe. And this is the best, a very practical description of spiritual theft. Okay, go on. St. Bevo is like uh, a god of prosperity. Okay. Normally they take human bone or they carve a wooden image and then they will key human blood or key somebody and then and pour, pour the blood, blood on upon the it and then activate it. Now, when it is activated, let's say we are all family members. Me, you, Shala, Evangelist Philip, Pastor Ogbe. If it's activated and I'm the one to prosper, what will happen to the rest? They'll be poor. They'll be poor. That's spiritual theft. It's the essence. If you're a tip man here, let me. Do you have any insight into what he's saying? All right. So, so that's spiritual theft. You see, the prosperity, the, the pseudo prosperity that the guy that is prospering through that agency is receiving um, is at the expense of the possibilities of the rest members of the family. So the rest members of the family will pay the price. Their essence, their substance, their light, their illumination is gathered and used to empower one individual and their own lot and portion will be abject poverty, penury. That was why I was telling us the other day when we were talking about evidences of demonic activity around people's lives, when you find an unnatural kind of poverty, it's as a result of manipulation. It's a function of the activity of the thief. The thief cometh not. He doesn't have any other agenda. But when he shows up, what he does is that he steals. So there are categories of spiritual attacks that are within the description of theft. Are you still with me? Yes, sir. Now, take it from me. Take it from me. These three days that we introduced this dimension, okay? I was led to do everything that I did. Today too, I am led. Sometimes it becomes so clear that I see what God is talking about in a dream. And I say, go and act this thing. Pray this prayer. Use this scripture. So today is one of those days. I am here under instruction. Are you with me? So what Pastor Donatus just described is one of the manifestations of spiritual theft. Why? Right. Okay, there's a brother in the... Okay, bro, come. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes these things... Do, no, 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 no. Get the mic. Get it. Your experience. What happened in your family? You told me some stories when you came those days Crazy about your elder brother, some of the things he did, and uh, some of the promises he gave you. Can you help us? Crazy give us insight. You know, when we teach these things, uh, people say, ah! No, it's not utopian. It's practical. Yes? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, my elder brother, we're just two, as in male... He told me. There are just two. Yes. two. Two males in the family. Then sisters too. Okay, a lot of sisters, but yes. males. Three of them. Now, this elder brother you are talking about is he from your mom? Yes, and same dad. Same dad, same mom. Okay. Yes, sir. So in the world of witchcraft, you, your brotherhood, your true brotherhood are the members of the coven. Um, your blood, in fact, some of the most hated people around your life might even be your blood relatives. So the psychology of, of witches is what we are still studying it. We are, still stu <laughs> we are laboring to understand the way witches think. Okay? So this is his blood brother. All right? Go on. So I, I traveled to the village 2018 and then I met with him. He said uh, 
he, when he saw me, he was shocked. And then he started confessing that he has done everything to kill me, to destroy me, to waste my life. He don't even know. It's only God that can tell the story as to why I am still you see alive. alive. Okay. And then he now said uh, he, has, he has gone to so many places. He, he brought out my picture that he had with him. And he said, this picture has been to so many places, but he tried to kill me, but it didn't work. He tried to convert my wealth because he has seen who I am in the realm of the spirit, that he has done everything. So that's the aspect that concerns me, mm. converting his wealth. Now, you might see this very simple scripture, and in your own estimation, it's, it's poetic. The thief cometh now. But to steal, to kill. <laughs> God has revealed big things <laughs> in that way. So he traveled from place to place, shrine to shrine, seeking to find the warlock that has the mas mastery of wealth transfer. When you are talking about wealth transfer and believing God, you are quoting the scripture the wealth of the wicked is accumulated, is laid up for the just. They which have another doctrine. Their own doctrine is that your own wealth is available. And it's going to be converted. It's going to be diverted. Just like budgetary allocations in, in the Nigerian context are diverted. It's also possible in the realm of the spirit. Yes? So he said it, some, to some places he went, the native doctors, they, they pursued him because he said, this man, you can't destroy him. And then, the last time I traveled, he told me about the same thing he did, that it didn't work. The so, anytime he goes home, he has news <laughs> from a very desperate, a very desperate, wicked brother. He, he has news from the brother every time he goes home. So, even before he travels home, he will send me a text. Can I go this so it comes with new expositions. May the Lord give you understanding. May God help you to know that witches are not as relaxed as you. Mm. They are very determined, very consistent. At the end of the day, when we see Satan on the other side, I will hear him that Cut, you try. <laughs> <laughs> you try. Oh God, you try. Very consistent. You will pray for 21 days. I say you want to go and stretch. You want to stretch yourself. Which is don't go on sabbatical. It's after that 21 days they will now become, they will charge. The Bible says that Jesus went into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. We were not told the temptation for the, for the 40 days. But the Bible says that after those days were ended, he was unhungered and the tempter you would think that, okay, it's 40 days temptation. Then you will relax. After those, the temptations that are recorded in the Bible were the temptations he tempted Jesus after those 40 days were accomplished. So anytime he goes home, there's breaking news of current satanic technology that have been adopted <coughs> to prey on his death. <laughs> okay, just round up. The, the last time I traveled, he met with me and he said that, uh, he had done everything to kill me, but since it didn't work, can we be one family? <laughs> In fact, he said that. Now let's be one. There's something called the witchcraft embrace. I, I, don't, I don't have time for that this time. When a witch, a warlock, has tried to get you spiritually and it, it doesn't succeed, he needs to be able to get you physically, naturally. So um, he begins to advance this strategy of embrace. We'll talk about the ingredients in that strategy. And just in case you're in that situation, what and what you need to do. There is something that must happen before you can accept that person as a brother. Until that thing happens, don't be gullible enough to drop your guard. Because 
when you see the appeal for community, it is an indication of the fact that the warfare has gone to another level. Are you true? All right, so salute my friend. The thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Now, let us look at this in threefold. Because um, spiritual covering is on three levels. Turn with me so that you may not understand the intentions of the thief until we explain spiritual covering and what to expect if you are spiritually covered. Indicators that show that you are beginning to lose your covering. Let's go to the book of Job. Who is there in the book of Job chapter 1? Job chapter 1, beginning from verse 8. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for naught? Hast thou not made an edge about him and about his house and about all that he has on every side? That's the three scopes of a spiritual edge. Let's go again. Number one. Hast thou not made a hedge about him? That's you, your life. Your life is secure. If you are spiritually covered, your life is secure. Right? That's number one. And about his house, not just your life, your biological children and other people that are in your custody, they benefit from your covering, whether they know it or not. Are you, are you there? Should I say something? I hope you will not hear it as pride. May the Lord purge your ears so that you will hear what I'm saying, not what you think I'm saying. You may not know, but pastors that are in this city are enjoying covering because of what we are doing. Even if he doesn't know, he doesn't know at all, but he's, he's enjoying covering because of what we're doing. Because the next scope of covering is that those in your house are covered. Those in the territory that your priesthood is prevalent enjoy the implication of your spiritual activity and hence they also drink from your covering. Is that clear? The third level of covering has to do with substance. Substance. Your car. Your investment in the bank, your business, the works of your hands. Oh, you're not with me. Stay with me, stay with me. I'll so random. So, because as we finish the Watchman series, which will finish, what's the, how many days do we have in this fasting? We have three more days. Then we move into the warfare series. So these are the evidences of a new emphasis. Everything that God has not planted, that is around your life, is God's intention to uproot it. In the name of Jesus Christ. So we have the first scope of warfare has to do with your life. Is that clear? Now, if you are someone that labors before God intensely and you are faithful to him, Normally, what God does is that he gives you a, a, a certificate, a life cert cert certificate. It doesn't matter where you enter. It doesn't matter what you do. You come back alive. And concerning your death, I will need to say die before you die. Because the Bible says, and Moses died according to the word of the Lord. If you hear that I die, God's hand is involved. It's God that said, my son, die. 
uh, God's hand is involved. So it's not, it's not going to be a function of Satan's dexterity, Satan's ability. Hallelujah. So we have you, that's one. That's the first circle. Then we have your house, that's the second circle. Then we have what? The things that you have. Now, sometimes in warfare, God will allow, because of the intensity of the warfare, God might allow Satan to touch the things that you have. Maybe. Are you with me? I think I need to show you from the scripture. The insurance policy. So, whereas spiritual covering covers these three scope of things, I need to show you the insurance policy of spiritual warfare. Luke chapter 10, quickly. Luke chapter 10, verse 19, that's the insurance policy of spiritual warfare. If you are in a situation of warfare, this is the guarantee. Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So the insurance policy of spiritual warfare is about you. You get it? So when there's a battle situation and it becomes so terrible, this is the guarantee. You will not be hurt. It is because of this that we need to, our children, spiritual and physical children, must be brought up to be warriors too. The more warriors we have in the clan, the more impossible it will be for Satan to be able to pray on any life. I heard of a pastor that pastored for 32 years, and under his pastorate, nobody died for 32 years. He trained everybody to be a warrior. 32 years. An American pastor. So, the moment your children come of age, teach them how to pray in tongues. And how to pray in tongues for long. Take food from them. Let them understand fasting. How to starve the flesh and to stuff the spirit. You will find out that under 12, under 14, children will be able to have prophetic dreams that will guide you and save you from attack. Just like the scripture says, nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing shall by any means hurt them too. See that? I have seen people that died just because they were spiritually immature. And they made no effort whatsoever to build themselves beyond their current status of civilization. When intense wars take place, the innocent suffer. Have you heard of what happened to in, in the book of Matthew chapter 2? When Herod was looking for the children that were two years and under, because the wise men, when they left his palace, they went to visit Jesus in Menger, and they were warned by an angel, and they departed another way. The statistics that Herod had with which he could walk with was two years and under. So he gave a decree that they should slaughter every child that was two, year and, two years and under because he didn't have more information in his data bank. He had a broadband kind of information and that was what they used to execute children. A generation of children, they were wiped out because it was a day when spirits were at war. Human beings were pawns in their chess games. You will see angels leap into people's dreams and say, go to Egypt. Because it, they, they, there was chess, chess game in the territory. And we could see that the devil did not have the insight that would have given him the advantage in the war. So he had to kill a lot of people. And that day, children died not because they had sinned. That day, people died because in the time of spiritual warfare, innocence is not a guarantee for life. I went to preach in my village, and it was a powerful moment. You know, that anointing that is upon me to discern death, people that are about to die, it was just operating, and we're bringing people from the hands of death. It was wonderful. And I'm talking about my, our ancestral church, I know you don't understand what I'm talking about. When I don't even know how they invited me in the first place. In fact, I'm I'm confused now. I'm confused. But 
It's just like NKST, they invite me to preach in NKST. Not NKST in my country, NKST in the village, in your village, where you are from. So when I got there, I, 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 they put me on minister seat. Okay. You can imagine, the pastor didn't greet me now. So I'm wondering, okay, how did they arrange this meeting? Because the pastor is not, is not happy that I'm there. I greeted him like this. He pretended as, as if he didn't see me. I did like this. When I was tired, I, I stopped. I saw the elders at the back. I, I did like this. No one. So I'm wondering who approved, the, who approved my coming. <laughs> Then we started ministry. The healing anointing came so strong. Two of the elders that were deaf in one ear each, the ears popped open. My own uncle, that is the eldest in our family now, I didn't know he was deaf in one ear all this while. His ear popped open and he, he gave his life to Christ during the, the altar call. Witches began to manifest in the church with loud voices. When I finished preaching and I came back, I still greeted the elders. Then they, they now looked at me angrily, but they now do like <laughs> Power can change things. Power can change it. <laughs> Finished preaching, hopped into the vehicle to come back. We got to um, Taraku. One man has, his brake had failed, and he just faced us like this. And the guy that was in front of us now stepped on his brake to ensure that we, didn't, we couldn't dodge. If we go this way, we'll kill everybody here. So we just waited for the man to come and... We drove that car from that place to Makoti like a bicycle. Because in the heart of spiritual warfare, God can allow some of your, your goods to be victims. But nothing shall by any means. Because of time, I'm going to stop here. The thief cometh not, but to steal. So I have stories of wars that were fought in the name of the Lord. There were some times that God would say, wake up now. Where are you? Wake up, wake up. Take your things and leave here now. I don't know what he was preventing. I don't know because I obeyed. So I, I, I didn't stay long enough to know what he wanted to prevent. For which he hurriedly said, so I've seen times when Jehovah said, live here today. So I don't ask questions. I don't send pleasantries. And those days I didn't have a car. So I moved to the park and I went. And I've been asking him, what, what was it that you were so apprehensive about? He has not told me to do so we have had cars bashed. We have had all kinds of stuff take place. But one thing I can tell you, if it's too bad, nothing shall by any means hurt you. If not, the three, the, the three levels of covering have to do with you, have to do with your household, have to do with your substance. If you study the book of Job, you'll find out that the first victims of that Spiritual attack was what? Substance. Second victims of the spiritual attack what? what? His household. That's why I'm trying to let you understand that even if the devil begins to attack the household, if each and every one of them is, has his own stature, that will not, it will not prevail. But in their own case, Job was the only spiritual man that offer sacrifices on their behalf every day and say, Lord, forgive them oh, if anyone has sinned against you and has, you know, retained evil in their thoughts. Take this sacrifice for them. So Job, Job, uh, Job was the one overseeing the entire landscape with his own spirituality instead of him to disciple the people to be able to hold their own ground. So the measure, the estimation of my success in ministry it's not a product of how many people I can gather. Because Jesus is not looking for sitting capacity. He's looking for sending capacity. How many people can we send in the name of Jesus? 
to go do damage to the kingdom of darkness. We are tired of people that sit down. And so this year, we're in a cantonment trying to transform you from sitting down to becoming a, an active fighter in the ways of war that is raging in the spirit. Please help me tell your neighbor, nothing shall by any means hurt you. So when you come to the battlefront, you come with full assurance of faith that if this thing goes bad, I'm sure of my life. Satan can be vicious. It can be terrible. He can come with all manner of tricks to intimidate you and to break your confidence. But you need to hear God before Satan speaks to you. And God is saying, nothing shall by any means hurt you. If I had more time, I would have shown you the, um, the politics behind spiritual warfare and the circumstances under which God may allow, may, big may, allow your substance to be encroached upon. Hallelujah. So apart from the altar that we have in the church here, you need to have another altar at home so that when he comes for your household, he will meet a stronger hedge than the one you found in the city center. Set up the hedge of your own household. Set up the hedge. If you are a new, if you are intending to become a husband and there's a lady you are cutting, you know what? Begin to practice hedging, hedging in prayer. I saw some people wearing red and white yesterday. I say, you, you are far. <laughs> you are far from the kingdom of God. <laughs> you are far from the kingdom of God. Practice, begin to practice what you will do. Critical part of your existence in marriage is to ensure that the hedge is strong because the altar is burning. It's because Satan will come. And that's what the apostle wanted to, to notify us of. He started his presentation by saying, For we rest. I'm going to stop there. For we rest. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places. Hallelujah. We are going to rise today and contend in the spirit. And I will show you some tricks on how to contend. Hallelujah. Many times Satan knows that he's short of raw materials, short of staff. He would like to go to places where he's likely to win. He doesn't like the clan of the warriors. He doesn't like it. He will only come to the clan of the warriors if he doesn't have any choice. If the damage we are doing to him is in, is in, is in very terrible proportions, then he tries to see if he can do something. But he doesn't like fighting people that are strong. He will pray on you when you are born in low. Oh my God. We wrestle. So tonight what we are going to do is to give Satan a blow. Because the activity in the spirit that we do is capable of blows. It's capable of. It's capable of. First of all, we we'll warm our spirit by a moment. Five minutes of speaking in tongue. I just have 15 minutes to do what we need to do. Can you gain ascendancy in the spirit? Gain ascendancy in the spirit. We are warriors in the hands of our master. We are a warrior people, a warrior clan. We fight in the name of our Lord. Simon Kobelaski, Mandoski, Zosan Hambrada Baboria, Skizamote, Azika, Mekabola, Mazika, Ronse, Samante, Baboko, Sabakata, Barika, Skedia, Tambolo, Kobre, Busa, Kebosa. 
Bari masuke brate kaskito mondeli. Jeni kabata kose zani. Abresko petabuko batala. That's one of the metaphors of the Christian. He's a warrior. He's a radical in the spirit. Jaimo kore nasike. Rahaske tombre. Ruka pabalikos kabalantelia. Abrema kaparuka sate. Alisko pelanto. Braka zeminaita. Abose sese. Risko fatama kundele. Azizonda. Abraske tomoko ronte zali. Amaita kombe. Zaminaita komba santa. Alatos. Alatos. Yatatos. Lenkatos. Brantatos. Baratosa. Ikamasele. Asosela iko brantelia. Shamina kabelaske. Branta babo la halabata. Shemina hanta la baboria. Sheki la bonde. Makabalatala. Sheki na bonde. Shamina koska tamina anteli. Abreka patala. Alabosa. Alabosa. Askebalontele. Asuka patakuna. Apatesi. Abreka sanda baboria. Escapale makunda. Apaya kosketa. Iskompela. Aparata. Ikabalama sante. Azosaita. Akamanselia. Akope esketomena. Lai kompala no se kembeles. Disko patola mahaito. Porosketa mika bela. Yekekela. Supriata. Manta bondeke. Manta sabalantelia. Esose na kabalata. Ebrante kompalama. Yaka besame. Ala prompelo. Asamalanteli. Apresko pelama kanta baboria. Alama mama na hasara. Alama mama na asika. Askanda babola kapresa. Abru kapatwa. Ebrake tonde. Asiko brena. Akabala tuante. Akaba somenante. Ikabalata branda baboria. Abres kompalata. Abranda baboria. Eskame na asika. Abranda basuka belato. Yata tome nankenda. Abraka basanda, abraka kola batua, eskombe la menatale, akamba la tabanda babolia, ika besko menante, akama nombre, akama samanta, akama samanta, akama samanta, ekaita, ebranda babolia, asuna kanda babonda, ala la 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 basuke, rakata na manataya, ala proskate, abaka. Asapa kata laka barata branda baboria, oria mama shika terminala, luke basuka tali bokoria. In the name of Jesus, just in case you are a parent here, I want to bring all of your seed under cover. That in 2022, Satan will not encroach. You see, the agenda of Satan does not change. He said, the thief cometh not. He has no other reason to show up. Just in case you see him with a face cap, he is not coming to do guy. He's coming to steal. You see him with dark bones. He doesn't want a selfie. He's coming to kill. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can we be covering all, over all our children? There is a hedge in the spirit. 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 Oh. We will not bury any child because there is a hedge in the spirit. It doesn't matter where they are, what nation they are. There is a hedge in the spirit. Those in America, those in the Great Britain, those in Scotland, those in the Netherlands, there is a hedge. There is a hedge. There is a hedge. There is a hedge. 
in the spirit, in the spirit, there is a head in the spirit. Hey, Kofela Menasika, Lambro Kosketa Palata, Shama Kante Baboya, Zekilanto Brode, Abarata Blanda Babola Kaskete, Yeta Besuse, Yeta Beka Palatande, Anta Baboria, Zemina Capresca, Yesa. Those of you online, pray for your children. Pray for your children. Pray for your children. The devil will not succeed because there is a head. There is a head. There is a head in the spirit. There is a head in the spirit. Michael Semila Habarato possesses it. La copende, Kelly Masalia, Abara Mama Masiko. Esia la brosketa baculate. E cabelo mosonte brela macantelia. Parata babos a fresca pela macante. Brusquesa celia taca bonda. Bucapela cosque balia. E campe scuda mando. A braca tala baboco tombria. A scheman zel. A kema salabod. There is a head. There is a head. There is a head. There is a head. There is a hedge in the spirit. There is a hedge in the spirit. Maka bobo sali. Ababalia kanske balantoria. Zemina kompres kabako la bota. Abasanta baboria. Iko pesi. La tua makapelia. E kome la isome. Parata babosa. E la tia babala. Brasketo mokobo. Is come and tell it. Rata da da kobela. Rata da 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 ba bosa. Rata da 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 ba basaka. Abrate kuskabela. Ebra kaba bolo konse. Abila tabenaita. Akaba komba. Iata beski. Raka boko tamante. Eka balia taya. Ube bakote. Rakos kamena. Raba sote. Ah! Enabilo. To the family of Yahweh, I am standing on the covenant of Yahweh, on the altar of Jerusalem. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Now, ushers, I don't know how you are going to do this, but I have an instruction from God. If you are firstborn, come, come to the front. If you are firstborn, you don't need to run, uh, rush. The ushers will just arrange so that we can have something very tidy. And those of you that are participating online, if you are firstborn, anywhere you are, lay your hand on your head. I want to pray. This is an instruction. You see, the truth is, some prophetic instructions we receive from the Lord, we don't even know why. But that's the way of warfare. We war because it teaches our hands to fight 
He teaches our fingers to walk. We do not know how to walk, but he teaches us. Maybe you were not biologically born as firstborn, but maybe because of death, you are now firstborn. Just join. And I am standing. Now, no backup, just one singer. Yeah. I am standing on the altar of Sorry, Ababa, na ma Yeso salamo kori Ababa la maski. And I belong. Covenant of Yahweh. On the altar of Jerusalem. In Jesus' name. Still keep that hand on your head. I want to pray now. Pastor Joseph, I didn't know you were your yeah, firstborn. Well, I don't know why the Lord gave this instruction, but we, we might find out. We might find out. Doctor, are you firstborn? Oh, your daughter is first. <laughs> the last time I checked, you were you were last. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, some there are some of you that certain yokes on your life just because you are firstborn. Uh, let me explain. You look like a threat to several people and the people believe that they will make a headway with their intentions by complicating your life through yokes, through attacks, through all kinds of stuff. Now, um, as I pray, these yokes will be re removed. Now, ushers, when if, if you find reactions, it means the yokes are living, and the specific people that are reacting, we need to minister to them. That's why I came today. That's why I came. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask, look upon your people. Like you instructed, these are the firstborns. And we have come so that you can remove yokes from their lives yokes from their lives yokes from their lives many of them are blocking so many evil intentions from coming to pass and because of that they have they have accumulated hatred lord let the yokes 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 so ushers it has started the hand of god will begin to come down especially on those that have yokes, then you bring them to the stage for me. It's coming stronger. 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 Holy Spirit, remove the yokes. 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 It's coming stronger. It's coming stronger. It's coming stronger. Coming stronger. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We remove the yoke in the name of Jesus. It's coming stronger. It's coming stronger. Father, anyone that is considered a threat for which attacks have been deployed, all kinds of things, injury has been deployed before your presence today. Let those yokes begin to melt. Let those yokes begin to melt. Let it 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 melt. Let it melt. Let it melt. In the name of Jesus. It's melting. It's melting. It's melting. It's melting. 
that yoke you've been carrying for so long, for so long, I come against it. I come against it. I come against it. In the name of Jesus. Yes, I come against it. I command it to be lifted. Lifted, lifted, lifted. Lifted from your life. Lifted from your life. Lifted. Oh my God. There's one of you because of inheritance. A mighty land. A mighty land. And uh, it belongs to your dad. And your uncles are trying to wipe you out just because of that land. Where are you? Because come. I will fortify you. Yes. Lord, let the yokes break. Let the yokes break. Let the yokes break. Let it break. Let it break. Let it break. You'll be indestructible in the name of Jesus Christ. No weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. Go. Go in this demo. Let that yoke, let it break. I'm seeing someone because of what you represent in your family as a firstborn, you have been afflicted for many years. You are managing your health. You are managing your health. Come, come. Father, in the name of Jesus, I break that yoke. Let the arrow of affliction, let it come off him. Let it come off him. Come off him. Come off him. In the name of Jesus. 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 Those of you standing, oh, there's still one of you. I'm, I'm sensing that. The angel of the Lord is touching. Uh -uh. Say, where's are you first? Are you first? Come, come. Yes, come, come. Bring her. I remove it. I remove it. I remove it. I remove it in the name of Jesus. I remove it. I remove that yoke. You, you can no longer bear that yoke. I remove it. I remove it from your life in the name of Jesus Christ. I remove it. Let her go. In the name of Jesus. Father Lord, I ask she cannot bear any yoke. No yoke. In Jesus' name. I use as a point of contact to reach the entire family. Let there be liberty. Let there be freedom. Liberty. Freedom. Liberty. Freedom. Liberty. Freedom. Liberty. Freedom. In the name of Jesus. All right, let's pray. Father, just like you instructed. Just like you instructed, I bring everyone before you right now. And I demand that the yokes that they bear be taken from them in the name of Jesus. And by reason of this prayer tonight, even their own children that are firstborns will not bear this yoke. We cancel that transaction of the enemy in the name of Jesus Christ. See, the Satan is releasing them. We cancel it in the name of Jesus Christ. We cancel it in the name of Jesus Christ. We cancel it. Cancel it in the name of Jesus. I demand the restoration of your health, sound health, your fortunes, your marriage. Heights that the Lord has intended to bring you into, that you have felt resistance. Resistance that you cannot explain. In the name of Jesus Christ, let the yoke be broken. 
Let the doors of marriages open to you in Jesus' name. Let the doors of advancement open to you in Jesus' name. Let affliction go in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. You are released. You are released. activity of the thief. He steals, he kills. And there are many ways he kills. And then he destroys. We'll do an episode exclusively on destruction. And then you will see how people have cohabited with attacks of the devil. And it is not the will of God. 